A warm welcome to your Barbie Today evening news update for Wednesday, January 12. Police are investigating an unnatural death reported this evening. Police Public Relations Officer Inspector Rodney Innes says the body of a 26-year-old male was found hanging in the living room of a house at Baycroft New Road, Bridge Road, St. Michael. In other news this Wednesday, it was a smooth day of voting at polling stations across the country as police officers and other election day workers cast their ballots ahead of the January 19 poll. From as early as 7 a.m., polling stations across the island's 30 constituencies were open to facilitate the process. A roving Barbados City team visited several polling stations on the western side of the island and presiding officers said there were no hiccups. So far, it has been going fairly easy. Obviously, we have a little difference because of the COVID protocols and stuff, but um, voting has been steady so far. We have 89 people on our register, and so far, it, we have 29 who have voted. Um, we have 10 males and 18 females so far. We did have about five or six persons waiting at seven when we started. It's been a steady flow so far. We haven't had five minutes where there wasn't somebody inside the station, but with COVID and the need to sanitize and take the temperature, it tends to make the lag time in between uh, registrants that much seamless. Okay, and in terms now of um, how many persons do you have on your books to vote today? How many have come up so far? We have 154 odd electoral officers that will be voting today. This morning was kind of quick movement. We had a lot of people coming in, but as we progress, it has slowed considerably. So we're just basically waiting for people to come. And, and in terms now of with the COVID-19 protocols, how have, um, has it been a long delay or has it slowed down significantly? Not necessarily, no. No, everybody's been quite understanding as they come in to that they have to follow the protocols. So it's one person at a time into the polling station. To developments on the campaign trail amid calls for the government to say whether it will continue with an international monetary fund program if re-elected, Prime Minister Mia Motley says her administration will decide on the way forward at the right time. There is no government that has been more transparent about its dealings with the international monetary fund than this government. And when the program finishes, we will do the assessment to see what is needed. But you don't do the assessment before looking at the outturn figures. On the Democratic Labour Party platform, President Verla de Pisa raised questions about whether the Barbados Labour Party is heading into the January 19 election as a house divided. Can you imagine? You have 30 seats. Some will say 29 and one in opposition. So I will give that. You have 29 of 30 seats and you have the temerity to stand and face the people of Barbados and talk about how we are divided and you need to have unity and there needs to be one voice. That division will have to be inside your house. The deputy leader of the Alliance of Progress Party, Lynette Eastman, says her team is on a mission to restore democracy in Barbados and will ensure every citizen has a voice. But she says in order for this to happen, voters must go out and cast their ballots. And now that we have that right and that privilege, we should not take it for granted. And it is for this reason that I'm asking you, all of you out there, to come out in your numbers. You have a choice in this election. Every election is important, and this one is just as important as any other election. I personally trust Barbadians to always make the right choice. On this occasion, we need to put right what we did in 2018. In 2018, we became so disgusted that we felt that we had to put an end to that government. At this point in time, we need to ensure that in Parliament we have representatives of not just the traditional parties, but the newer parties that have emerged, such as the Alliance. The COVID-19 death toll moved to 268 today, 
Two men, a 52-year-old, passed away from the viral illness at the Harrison's Point Isolation Facility. He was unvaccinated, and on Tuesday, an 81-year-old who was fully vaccinated succumbed to the virus at the Harrison's Point Isolation Facility. On Tuesday, the Best Santos Public Health Lab identified 560 new COVID-19 cases, 243 males and 273 females from the 2,403 tests. The new cases consist of 87 persons under the age of 18 and 429 who are 18 years and older. Under the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19, the total number of persons who are fully vaccinated is 145,217 persons. That's 53.6% of the total population or 63.6% of the eligible population. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news in Jamaica, the president of the Agricultural Society, Lenwer Fulton, says the sector is facing big challenges and the new agriculture minister must hit the ground running. Ocean Masters of Television Jamaica reports. The Jamaica Agricultural Society, JAS, says newly appointed Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Pernell Charles Jr. will have to hit the ground running to settle issues of plaguing farmers. Of note, pretty larceny. Just last month, a number of farmers in St. Catherine reported their goods stolen and though some of the animals were recovered, lives could have been lost as an attack was carried out on the home of one of the goat owners. He will have to look and pray the last thing right now. The amendment of the Act, the Agricultural Produce Act, has been passed through the cabinet already. So I think he should continue that with great speed. President of GAS, Lenworth Fulton, is also calling on the minister to look at the country's sugar sector. Well, he's from a particular part of Clarendon that carries the Money Musk um, sugar factory. So I hope he will have something to say on sugar. Where are we going with the manufacture of sugar and the growing of sugar cane? So he has a lot of things to, to occupy. His on the international front, Boris Johnson has apologized over a party held at Dunglin Street during the first coronavirus lockdown in May 2020, as he faced MPs at the Prime Minister's questions today. I want to apologize. I know that millions of people across this country have made extraordinary sacrifices over the last 18 months. I know the anguish that they have been through, unable to mourn their relatives, unable to live their lives as they want, or to do the things they love. And I know the rage they feel with me and with the government I lead when they think that in Downing Street itself the rules are not being properly followed by the people who make the rules. In a heated session in Parliament, the opposition Labour leader called on Johnson to resign. Well, there we have it. After months of deceit and deception, yeah. the pathetic spectacle of a man who's run out of road. Yeah. 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 His defence, his defence that he didn't realise he was at a party. <laughs> it, it, it is so ridiculous that it's actually offensive to the yeah. British public. He's finally been forced to admit what everyone knew, that when the whole country was locked down, he was hosting boozy parties in Downing Street. Yes. Is he now going to do the decent thing 
and resign. Yeah. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.